Okay, hello and welcome everyone. Welcome to GOD Traders Tea Time with me, Darius Lonchowskis. Today is the 14th of April 2020. So, yep, welcome everyone. Welcome to this Tuesday's um, Tuesday's afternoon recorded session where we're going to have a quick look at the markets, a few of the charts, the usual stuff. Um, but before we do that, as always, let's quickly have a read through our risk disclaimer. So, the content we produce does not constitute investment advice or investment recommendation, should not be considered as such, and does not in any way constitute an invitation to acquire any financial instrument or product. As always, a few seconds for you to read the rest, and we can continue. Okay, so also just before we jump in, a uh, quick mentioning of our GOD YouTube channel to which you can always subscribe to in order not to miss any of our upcoming videos. And of course, our GOD Bank website and specifically our GOD research page, which we all update a, on a daily basis as well. So, yep, feel free to visit us here on JODBank.com and click on the research tab right there on the top. So, um, quick update on what's happening here. This was this is the figure from this morning. So um, let's see how much it has grown. Um, hopefully not a lot, but um, that's probably not something that uh, we get nowadays. Um, so the yes, well actually it's quite okay. Um, I would say the the well the unfortunately the amount of deaths continues to rise. Um, but um, yeah, the total infections kind of is easing off a little bit, I would say. Um, so yep, maybe this is a good, could be a good sign. So uh, jumping into the markets now. So the first one I want to touch on is the FTSE 100. Uh, so the quick update on what's happening here. This morning I talked about this one and uh, initially we had a nice push higher. However, as you can see, uh, the index is kind of retracing back down a little bit here and currently balancing on this on this level here that I, uh, that I was talking about. Well, balancing around this level uh, near uh, which is around the 5,815 territory. So, um, well, to be honest, even if it drifts a little bit lower, as long as the price remains above this upside support line taken from the low the 23rd of March, uh, yep, we, we, we could continue targeting the upside. So, again, as long as this upside line remains intact, we could still stick to the upside and aim for higher levels. Uh, the, the, as I've mentioned this morning as well, the next potential target for us is around the, uh, of course, that psychological 6,000 mark and then a bit higher, the 6,231 mark uh, level, which is the, the high of the 10th of March. So keep your eyes on this one. Um, if by any chance this suddenly starts dropping below this upside line and let's say the uh, the price the index falls below the 5,500 mark and that's basically the uh, lowest point of 2016 uh, then uh, well I mean this could turn out to be ugly for FTSE and uh, we could see this one drifting further south so again for now even if we see like I said if we if we see a bit of a bit more downside as long as it remains above this upside line we will continue a, a looking up for uh, looking uh, in the upwards direction. Um, jumping into DAX. DAX here, uh, as you probably are aware, this morning, uh, or yeah, well, today actually, uh, DAX had a bit of a glitch and uh, the pricing was suspended for a few hours, um, but now everything's kind of back to normal. Um, looking at this picture here, you can see that um, uh, DAX is uh, today trading above this barrier, the one that I talked about, the uh, 10,590 zone. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and uh, of course, all this is still looking quite positive here for the index. And as a, as a similar story as with the FTSE, even if we see a bit of a drift lower, um, to be honest, as long as as long as it remains above this upside line, uh, well, we will continue targeting the upside here. So, yep, guys, for now, uh, 
like I said, it could drift a little bit lower, uh, especially if it drops back below the 10,590 uh, 10, zone. Um, if it does move lower here, then well, like I said, keep your eyes on the subside support line because this could be the last uh, kind of op option for the bulls to step in and drive this one higher. If the subside line breaks, uh, well, I mean, this is where we will start monitoring that psychological 10,000 zone and the drop below that uh, 10,000 territory could lead to deeper extensions to the downside. So that's why for now, uh, yes, we are still more positive than negative, especially if it continues to balance above the uh, 10,590 zone. But um, if it breaks this upside line, then yep, this could change a little bit. Uh, the FTSE, oh sorry, the FTSE, the S&P 500. Now, uh, this one, I talked about this one recently and uh, basically what I was saying here, same story basically if we see a move lower um if this area here the um the 2760 or, or should I say 2790 zone right here if the, which is the 50% uh, retracement on the fibonacci here um if this uh if this barrier continues to hold we could see a bit of a retracement so this is what happened yesterday um the index did uh, drift lower and tested this area right here, the 2728, 29 zone, roughly around there, which is the uh, which is the lowest point of uh, June 2019. So, uh, yep, uh, it managed to find good support around here. Um, and looking at the cash index right now, we can see that the price is uh, back around 2807 zone. So, uh, basically, it's already above that 50% uh, retracement on the Fibonacci here. So, um, in a way, this could lead to some higher levels, especially if it gets a break above the uh, high of last week. And the uh, the high of last week we have right here, let me just quickly put this one on the chart, uh, around 2,818 uh, mark, so roughly around there. So if we get a nice push above this, then yes, this would confirm a forthcoming higher high, and the next uh, potential target could be around the 2,900 zone, or even above that, the, we have the 61.8% retracement on the Fibonacci, uh, which currently coincides here with the 100 EMA on the uh, daily chart. So basically, some a bunch of good levels to to consider to keep an eye on uh, but uh, like I said for now we'll be very careful and uh, we could see um, uh, we could see maybe a, a further push higher as, as I said the price already is above the 50% uh, above the 50% uh, retracement on the Fibonacci um, and uh, in a way if we clear the high of, of, of last week around the 2818 territory then yes this could lead to some higher levels uh, gold let's quick have a quick update on gold uh, this morning I talked about this one and uh, basically what I was saying and basically gold created a new high already and probably let me just jump into a four hour chart on this one uh, right not a three hour chart but a four hour chart so uh, gold created a new high already um, so as you can see here, um, it tests the uh, slight uh, the area slightly above that that uh, 1730 zone, and it tested the area around the 1731.80s. And uh, to be honest, it seems that it's willing to continue drifting further north. Um, well. I mean, in looking at this picture, of course, still everything remains positive, and this is what I talked about this morning. We are still positive on this one, and if we do see a push above this, uh, the recent high, the 1731.80, then yep, the next potential target is around the 1754 mark, roughly around there. And let me just show you what that level is. That is the high of the 12th of December 2012, guys. So. Mm, this one right here that's the that uh Oh, not, sorry, not this one, the high of the, the highest point of November 2012, there we go, that's, that's 1754 mark, roughly around there, that's what we're going to be aiming for right now, after that, if we do see a test of that territory, then we'll take it, uh, take it from there, we'll see what it wants to do after, because again, it's a very strong, uh, good potential area of resistance, so let's see if gold can um, find 
uh, or should I say get a hold up there um, and then correct a little bit lower. Um, WTI oil. So here uh, the situation is uh, difficult for for oil, and uh, you can see that um, yep the bulls are suffering right now. But to be honest, this is exactly how uh, what I was talking about recently in my videos where I was covering uh, WTI oil. Um, what I was saying that if the price remains below this uh, 26.08 zone, which is the lowest point of 2016, right here, um, if this this uh, barrier continues to hold then we could see a bit of a slide here and maybe even a, a move back down towards that um, towards that psychological uh, 20 mark which as you can see acted as a fantastic area of support in March so uh, we'll keep an eye on this one carefully because if this gets a break and we see a daily close below this well I mean this is where it could turn out to be ugly for uh, for uh, for WTI oil and to be honest we could then start aiming for that 17.12 zone which is right here if I'm not mistaken there we go so that's the lowest point of 2001 and uh, that's around that 17.12 territory so keep your eyes on that one uh, good potential target um, let's see how this is going to play out, but for now, yes, everything's kind of still leaning more towards the downside. As you can see, uh, go, uh, WTI oil continues to drift lower today. So let's see, let's see if how this uh, psychological 20 zone will hold up here. Um, Litecoin. So haven't looked at Litecoin for a while now, and uh, basically, uh, it's in a way, of course, it's it's moving in a similar fashion as uh, Bitcoin and and Ripple and Ethereum. So here you can see that, um, but unlike Ethereum, which is still balancing above its short-term upside support line, all other uh, top four kind of uh, cryptos have managed to break it, their uh, upside lines here. These tentative upside lines. Um, so now, of course, the, this increases the chance chances of a further drift lower however um, we will be very careful around here because this is where the holdup is currently occurring near this 41 zone um, what we need to see now and you can see that the uh, the crypto here with Litecoin managed to dr yesterday managed to drift lower and uh, found some support around here uh, which is to be honest and let me just quickly drag this one which is around here basically so this is where it found support uh, near the 39.60 mark roughly around there and then rebounded back above this uh, this 40 zone so in a way what we need here is we need to see a nice good drop below this uh, 39.60 territory and then we could aim for lower levels for now uh, we will remain careful and cautious and uh, we will monitor this all this territory but once we get a drop below this territory and especially if we get a nice daily close below the 39.60 zone then yes we will aim for some lower levels the next potential target could be around the 34.60 uh, which which is the low of the 23rd of March um, and of course we could then start aiming for the low of the 16th of March which is around the 29.30 zone or even going further down again for now uh, we are leaning more towards the downside however we need to see a nice confirmation break uh, below this little territory right here guys so uh, below this 40 uh oh, sorry 39.60 zone so keep your eyes on this one in, in terms of the upside we'll take a very conservative approach and wait for a push above the current highest point of april which is around the 47.70 zone and then yes we could aim for some higher levels here guys at least towards this 200 ema on the on the daily chart um usd jpy very quickly on this one uh continues to drift lower this is what i talked about yesterday and uh, basically what i was saying guys uh, because we've managed to stay below this 108.58 zone uh now the the kind of the pair is drifting lower and for now everything's working according to the plan uh we are still aiming for this 106.92 territory right here uh, 
um, and this is where a holdup may occur because this is a very good area of support and uh, if a holdup here occurs uh, then we could see a bit of a rebound here but uh, the upside uh, this rebound to the upside could be limited near this downside line taken from the high of the 25th of March so in other words what we're looking here for is a potential uh, descending triangle pattern again it's not confirmed yet because we for this pattern we would need to see a uh, a nice rebound from the um, from the lows here from the uh, from this area of support um, and uh, then yep we could consider this as being as a nice descending triangle uh, again if in case this decides not to rebound from here and goes for a break straight away then well I mean further declines could be possible but then we'll be a little bit more on the cautious side because in a way it could still increase the chances of a potential correction at some point because then we could see something like this this happening where it could drift lower it could break the 106.92 straight away without rebounding first um, and then but it then could find some support somewhere maybe lower here and then rebound and test this barrier from underneath so again there are there is a bunch of uh, scenarios here to consider but first of course the main scenario is is that we are targeting this 106.92 zone uh, and then we'll take it from there uh, USD CAD now very very quickly on this one this morning it uh, drifted a little bit lower however it failed to move below the low of yesterday and uh, it traveled higher again however it still remained below this um, below the 1.3922 zone that I talked about so in a way we are still more bearish than bullish um, however we need to see a nice good strong move right now and ideally we would like to see a, a drop below the yesterday's low and uh, then we could consider further declines again for now we are like I said we are still bearish uh, we are still considering the downside especially if um, if it remains below this uh, below this barrier and uh, let me just quickly jump actually into a four-hour chart you can see that this is where it rebounded here and uh, drifted higher today but still remains below the um, still remains below this uh, barrier here at 1.39 uh, 22 mark so um, now then guys again uh, be very careful it's it, the pair is still struggling to overcome uh, to get back above its 200 EMAs but uh, to 200 EMA here on the four hour chart but of course we do have the the, the full US session to go through right now so yep uh, keep your eyes on this one uh, but as I said overall we're still more bearish than bullish um, AUD and ZD so this is quite an interesting one and let me just jump into a daily chart on this one so um, this is what I talked about yesterday when I was covering this one basically what I was saying that if we get a nice break and a close above this 200 day EMA then this increases the chances of a potential further drift north so this is exactly what's happening right now we are moving towards this barrier uh, as I said I've talked about this pair uh, yesterday and uh, the main focus was on this on this barrier right here so um now then if we do see a hold up here then well this could be a perfect opportunity for the bears to step in and drive this one a little bit lower back here towards these uh these lines this downside line and this upside line here um and uh, yep we could see uh could see a nice uh, some sort of action here if if this gets a hold up here as well then we could see a nice rebound and push back to the upside However, long story short, guys, let's not get ahead of ourselves too much. For now, the uh, the main focus is on this on this barrier here, and uh, let's see if this scenario can play out. So, if this barrier, the 1.05, 32, 30, uh, 33 zone, can hold the rate down, if it can, then well, we could expect a bit of a correction here to the downside. If it cannot, if this area breaks well this is where it could become very tricky it could push a little bit higher here uh, but then probably wouldn't go too much to the upside it would it probably would reverse again and and correct a little bit lower here towards this and this area here now would play a role of a support instead of a resistance so something to consider something to keep an eye on but as you can see as while we're uh, while I'm talking here this pair is still trying to climb higher so keep your eyes on this one uh, GBP Aussie so this is quite an interesting one so 
yep first of all uh, I've removed all the lines here just wanted to have a fresh start um, first of all let's draw this uh, sh uh, well should I say medium term upside support line taken from the lowest point of July 2019 and uh, we'll connect this this line this point here and you can see that this is a bit of a a tentative um, upside line. Now, of course, some of you might say, let's connect here these uh, these levels. We could do so as well. Uh, we could keep an eye on this one uh, just because we have more touches. And let's say if we assume that um, this is just a little, a little false breakout here and then connect all the other points here, maybe this could be a more valid one. So basically, it you guys do the judging uh, you do what what's more convenient for you because to be honest any line is a bit of a tentative sometimes so um, yep keep your have well have your charts in place and uh, have your uh, have your lines drawn there as well but uh, for this purpose for this analysis we'll we'll draw it this way and uh, we can see that still we are above an upside uh, we are still with an uptrend um, although we are seeing a bit of a correction here um, however all eyes now are on this upside line on on the 100 EMA here on the daily chart. Let's see if all this territory can provide some decent support. Um, for now, the main area which is kind of providing good support is the, this one, the low of the 24th of March, which is around the 1.95, 1 uh, 23, 24 zone. As you can see, uh, this area here is kind of acting as a fantastic area of support this morning. It did also rebound from here, from this territory and uh, now the big question here is can in general can this upside line can this 100 EMA here um, or even this this level here could all of this provide decent support for the pair to kind of drift back to the upside now of course this could be uh, this is a very <laughs> interesting question um, the way we're gonna do here right now is we're probably gonna remain a little bit neutral what we're gonna do is we're gonna keep an eye on this little target this little level uh, which is the uh, mark which mark marks the uh, inside swing low of the 31st of March also is near the low of the 7th of April and uh, yep this this area around the 1.9868 zone could be a nice uh, target to monitor because if we get a push above this level this uh, this would also place the pair above the 21 day EMA here so uh, basically more buyers could start joining in here after after a break of this level so in a way if we get a push higher but it fails to stay above this barrier here then we could see a bit of a decline again so that's why we need to see a nice good daily close above this above this level right here then 1.9868 and then we could target further upside so yep uh, keep your eyes on this one guys and uh, let's see how this is going to play out uh, for now we will remain a little bit neutral um, in terms of the downside if we get a break of this upside line and the uh, the rate falls below the low of the, or should I say, the lowest point of March, which is around the 1.9291 zone. Then yes, we will aim for uh, deeper extensions to the downside here, guys. So there are a bunch of levels to consider, uh, but uh, for now we will remain a little bit neutral. Um, and finally, Euro USD. So Euro USD is nicely popping to the upside. This is what I talked about this morning, guys. I was telling you guys to keep a close eye on this barrier here, the 1.0953, zone, and uh, we finally have liftoff. And uh, the big question here is, can we still get at least a four-hour candle close above this barrier? If we can wonderful for wonderful for the bulls we could start aiming for a slightly higher levels if we cannot if we see the 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 pair retracing back down by the end of the day well i mean uh, it's back to square one we will will remain neutral around this territory here because for us as i've mentioned previously to consider the downside is this level here the 1.0777 we need to see a break below this before we could get comfortable with with let's say further declines but again the downside for now is slightly off the table and uh, yep we let's see if we can see if let's see if if the pair stays above this this 1.0953 territory and above this 200 EMA here on the four-hour chart 
Okay, guys, I really hope you found it useful. Uh, there was a bit of information here, so, uh, yep, I hope you, like I said, you found it useful. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, so, if you want to catch my video tomorrow morning, uh, as always, my Traders Espresso, 6 o'clock GMT time, um, maybe a little bit after that, but, yep, capture my video then. And, um, uh, we will reevaluate everything again. We'll see how the some of these instruments have performed. Uh, we'll have a look at some new ones and uh, well, we'll take it from there, guys. Thank you very much for watching and listening and have a nice evening. Bye bye.